After discovering she was part of Simon Truman, she decided to join her Autobot friend, Optimus Prime, Bubble, Bulk, and Ratchet, as the late lamented Prime, as they returned to their home planet so she could learn more about her true origin. R.C. wasn't the most exciting teacher, but she was still a heck of a lot more engaging than her old teacher. <laughs> Judging from the revenue on the soles of your shoes, I can deduce you are not made to Icon. I could examine Sally Kirk. Perhaps an exchange student from one of the tribunals of her toy states. Perhaps. Or practice. Try it, Sherlock. So, uh, what are all those major objects on Dr. Henry? It's all here. Our secret proceeds to lead the class through the massive structure. It also houses an infirmary where I myself spent many stellar cycles after my memory had been wiped out by this. Oh, <laughs> but you probably don't want to hear my old war stories. But the students aren't paying attention to anything. <laughs> <laughs> Judging from the color and consistency, it's clearly some form of engine valve degreaser. Actually, it's takeout from Burger Box. My dad sent it from Earth to space. The best part? Sorry, Dad. Holding a paper cup filled with red soda. It's a Faygo red box pop. We only get this from Sinchi, Detroit. No! Announces R.C. as she leads the class down the secure cover. Normally, civilians don't have access to this area, but as a former intel agent myself, I was able to pull a few circuits. Sorry is too busy slurping down the last of her fake old red box pop to notice. She lets out a loud burp, which startles her class. Again, to use an inside voice. <laughs> and how come I can smell the disgusting red liquid coming from your vocal processor? Yeah, what do you think we are? Don't you move As R.C. and her classmates move to the next stop on the tour, an embarrassed Sari decides to dispose of the evidence while no one's looking. She sneaks behind a desk and backs up to a disposal hatch to, se to secretly pop the soda cup in but loses her balance and tumbles down the chute. Whoa! Unfortunately, neither R.C. nor her classmates see this as they walk out of the corridor. Sorry and her soda cup tumble into a shadowy room, landing on the top of a pile of scrap metal and other debris. As she touches the strange-looking cube of compressed metal, an all-spark-like glow emits from within. Suddenly, a voice cries out from the cube. The cube is talking, and very quickly. Hello, Mr. Engineer. What's happening? What's happening? I'm not going to be. The last thing I remember is running away from one night in the park. He was trying to kill me. Although I have my suspicions that he was really upset, kind of like an entire place, and he was really pretending to be long on fire for something long on fire. I don't want to be a Sorry, of course, already knows this story. 
Not that you, not that you can interrupt Blur's rapid fire monologue to tell him. Sorry was a member of Optimus Prime's crew on Earth, although she never got the chance to meet. She's heard Bumblebee complain many times about how annoying he was. <laughs> and now, she knows Bumblebee did not exist. <laughs> Sorry also realizes that she must have some residual tall spark energy still left in her from when she used her key to upgrade herself. It's a long story. <laughs> but since Sari can't talk this fast as blur, she doesn't have enough time to tell me. <laughs> Suffice to say, Sari is responsible for instilling some life, giving all spark energy into blur, and raising the hopes of fans who are left traumatized by her and the mind. <laughs> Before an exit, Sari discovers an access panel and tries to use her tech-savvy powers to activate and open up the door. When Sari uses her key to upgrade herself, see long story above. Mm -hmm. She obtained the ability to communicate with machines. She used that ability to help restore our seeds lost on long lost memory. But that's another long story. Mm -hmm. The complete DVD set is still available. <laughs> Otherwise, just trust me. Anyway, what Sari doesn't realize, as she activates the panel, she already inadvertently activated something else. She used to do that a lot, especially when she was one and two. <laughs> but this particular something is a fan favorite gremlin like being of pure energy named Creamsy. <laughs> Why the being of pure energy needs a name at all is beyond me. But there you have it. As Nancy, Siren, and Jose, Remember that? <laughs> Visit the council chamber. R.C. takes a head count and realizes Sari is missing. Maybe she went out to be watching me. Good! We just need to search for clues, interrogate witnesses, be confessing our snitches. We will do no such thing, Ma. Oh, boy. <laughs> Suddenly, an alarm flares. A voice projects over the PA. Intruder in recycling center. Intruder in recycling center. Now that sounds like a clue. <laughs> the lights suddenly come on to reveal that Sari and the Blur Cube are sitting on a conveyor belt that leads into a massive array of deadly looking machinery, razor sharp shredders, pile driving mashes, and an enormous smelting furnace. Naturally, Blur has quite a bit to say on the subject. Uh, <laughs> Could you make me a fan of any central cyber market recycling pipe? Some of the utilized extensions over the great work between the other boxes of the Decepticon, and the custom supply of scrap metal, and the sense of components of the ongoing defense damage. Fortunately, but Sari learns the scrabbling and this being of pure energy zapped itself into the machinery, which suddenly works the light. Sorry, grabs the blur cube and scrambles to outrun the now moving conveyor belt and avoid being shredded by the whirring blade or crushed by the pounding, slamming mashes. Been there, done that. <laughs> Replied the blur cube at Mike Machine's commercial speed. Been there, done that. Sorry, meanwhile, such a beautiful student uses her tech savvy power to determine there's something inside the machinery. An intelligence. An evil intelligence. Unfortunately, Greasy takes the opportunity to send a zap of electricity through the works that causes Strax to lash out and tie down Sari with a conveyor belt in a classic silent movie predicament. <laughs> <laughs> and she and Fur move directly toward the flame of the <laughs> Sorry, Blur, Art.
okay. <laughs> it seems our senior class may be rushed in at the last possible second and rescued them. Hope said you could think they could the doubt the furnace with a powerful flame of heart and foam, while Marcy used her laser blade to slice Sonny free. Cyber used his sonic power to blast the pile of pack the pile drivers to smithereens and night jammed up the gears of the conveyor belt with several adhesive spewing pellets from her utility belt. <laughs> it was a man fighting suspension suspenseful action piece that would have looked awesome in animation. <laughs> But can hardly be done justice with one just a single storybook illustration. Don't you wish GD4 had been produced now? Oh! All the sadness every time. What happened to you? Well, I was unfortunately disposed of here. And let's say my sister, I had some long-time problem who grew out because the sister kind of made a chunk way there, so there's nothing much happened for a very long time. Like the remainder of season three, to be precise. And so the sister of all can see it quite soon. Thank you, Blur, for summarizing the entire story of this poem. <laughs> Miraculously picking up that the crucial plot point amid Blur's endless babbling and seems slightly concerned. You must be talking about a crime scene. Add R.C. in an uncanny legal logic that provides the necessary exposition. <laughs> I remember it from my intel days. It's an old Susceptron probe in the Force program designed to sabotage cybernetic systems capable of jumping from unit to unit if it's not contained. Sorry, touches the machine, but no longer senses the evil presence. Suddenly, Nightseek's eyes glow red and turn creamy and shade. Nightseek for the readers who otherwise wouldn't be able to figure out what's happening. <laughs> With that, she attacks Sari, transforms into vehicle mode, and zooms for exit. I'm a sexy boy for Now! Yeah. <laughs> In a shocking twist. Oh. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the creepy possessed night beast conveniently reveals the villain's plot so the heroes can save the day. RC quickly activates the control panel and seals off the room. The reinforced security doors slam into place, blocking Reezy slash Nightbeat escape. Fortress Maximum is the Cybertronian defense tower. If Creasy gets him in the air, he could destroy all the Cybertron. Explains RC, setting the stakes for the remainder of the story. <laughs> the Creasy possessed Nightbeat attacks RC, who whips out her twin laser sword to deflect the attacks with an impressive display of swords by ship. <laughs> no one is more impressed than Sari yet. Perpetual victim of our scheme is some inexplicable badassery. <laughs> <laughs> RC will get the upper servo on Nightbeat, Greasy leaps out of Nightbeat, and into Siren. Siren's eyes glow red and turn crazy shape as the devilish beam of pure energy forces him to use his sonic power to blast a hole in the wall. <laughs> Blares the crazy controlled siren in his non inside voice. <laughs> Once again, reminding the reader of his plan. Hey, how about a deuce of my bow, man? Replies Jose as he douses a deuces. Douses. Siren with a flame retardant from his hose, forcing crazy to jump out of siren and into Jose's head, who runs out through the cold siren last Sorry, pulls out her scooter, which conveniently appears from out of nowhere like a Beast Wars weapon. 
and transforms the scooter into a jetpack and flies after the crazy controlled hose head into a tunnel. She catches up and grabs hose head. But as she does so, crazy leaps out of home hose head and into Sari's backpack. Sari and hose head thud to the floor as Sari's fat flash backpack soars off, now controlled by Boomerang, you'll never get crazy today, eh? Sorry, insist that they must. They will. Oh, dig up, Sorry. Responsible for not being made like a tree Canadian. Uh-huh. We need like fastest Autobot there is to catch your belly. Uh-huh. The fastest Autobot there is. Repeat, Sorry. An idea is forming in her techno organic brain. Sorry, plugs the blur cube into her backpack, suddenly infused with this spot for. Something is like that. <laughs> she inexplicably gains his powers and zips out after Crimson at super speed. But before she can take off, Arsene grabs onto Sari and speaks off with her. Uh, how would you be this possible? I mean, she didn't get a Sari season 3 upgrade. They have different instant strength, although the others will be stated. The sheer size comparison between Arsene and Sari and the editor of the Caribbean Q form on our back would make it extremely difficult to run more instantly stated. The a stretching credibility even beyond normal levels of theory. <laughs> <laughs> On the streets of Iacon, Cybertron's defense bot, Cheetor and Sideswipe, react to rapid whoosh of motion sweeping past them at sonic boom producing speed, thus providing a cameo from Bot Con 2011 time. <laughs> During the stomach on job, then the. That's it, then. Jumping gyro! Now that's what I call that! If I didn't uh, know better, Cheetah, I'd say that was a blue version of yourself. <laughs> Sides is clearly making an obscure reaping track. <laughs> Meanwhile, Blur acts as, as GPS rapid talking directions to Fortress Nexus to the non Cybertron familiar side. Oh, right, you're the gas one door. I'm not going to make the oil house. 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 Our scenes are not close. It's such a good spot. No, 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 no. You want to avoid all that construction at Golden Lake. Take a detour through the underground tunnel. Then you'll drive past Trypticon Prison. Come up at the Space Bridge Nexus and cut through the Autobot food. Uh, what about the Captain and just after the last day the first call we grew graduated, or you would know that the final day of the great war in the memory white helmet, thanks to the young men about Freud's friend. Oh. <laughs> First of all, he's not my husband. Countess Arsene, although it's clear we were ending in season three that Ratchet has feelings for her. Second of all, we can't take another run. Those are the only types of chromium backgrounds that have been designed. <laughs> Meanwhile, inside Trypticon Prison, the captive Decepticons, didn't think they could get the story without seeing that vision, mm. are held in stasis lock. But that doesn't stop Shockwave from realizing that his failsafe crazy program has been activated and is on a, is a set on a course to destroy all of Cybertron. Megatron asks Shockwave why he would create such a foolish program. Mm. Can't really. Uh, can't really hear them, mainly because Cory Burton is far, far, far away. <laughs> but it sounds like they're just saying it. It has to do with the fact that if this happened, they, they weren't even supposed to be here today. <laughs> Continuing on, inside of Fortress Maximus Control Center, Jet Fire, Jet Storm, overseas that coding defense grid is with Sentinel Prime. That's Sentinel Magnus! <laughs> <laughs> And breaking the fourth wall seems to have happened quite often within the stories. Uh, also, he's technically only an active magnet, so while Ultra Magnus recovers from the beat down shockwave, they can be the middle of the Shockwave room sentence does be right. <laughs> Nevertheless, Sentinel is too focused on his own self importance to notice as Sari's jetpack flies into the room, then clumps on the floor as Creasy flies out and into the control system. Why is it known that some look in the deactivating? Asked Jetfire. 